The Path Array tool enables you to make copies of selected objects and arrange those copies distributed along a path or a portion of a path. In this drawing is a walkway path drawn using a spline. There is also a tree at the starting point of the path. Assume that you want to place a series of trees distributed along the side of the entire walkway. You can use the Path Array tool to do this. On the Home ribbon, in the Modify panel, expand the Array Split button to find the Path Array tool. Also, in the Array Split button, there are actually three different Array tools. Whichever tool you used last floats to the top of the button. Hover the cursor over the Array Path tool for a few seconds. The tooltip expands and shows a short animation illustrating a typical use of the command. When you start the Path Array tool, the program prompts you to select objects. You can select the objects you want to array using any convenient object selection method. In this case, simply click to select the tree. Once you are done selecting objects, right click. Next, the command prompts you to select the path curve. Click to select the spline representing one side of the walkway. As soon as you do, you can see in the command window that you are creating a path array and that the array will be associative. The ribbon also changes to the array creation contextual ribbon, and you can see that the associative button in the properties panel is selected as indicated by its blue background. It is important to check this because the program will remember what you did the last time you created any type of array. By default, the program creates associative arrays. An associative array means that the copies will be part of a single array object and you will be able to modify the array after it has been created by adjusting any of its properties, such as the number of objects in the array and how they are distributed along the path. You can see a preview of the array as well as several grips. In this case, there are 14 copies of the tree spaced along the path. The program is prompting you to select a grip to edit the array or you can choose one of the options. For example, click and drag the triangular grip to change the spacing between each tree. When you do that, the number of trees automatically changes to fit the path. You can change the number of trees along the path. In the ribbon, click the items toggle to turn it off. You can see that a new grip appears at the end of the array. With the Items button toggled off, you can specify the number of items in the path array. Type 12 and press Enter. However, when you reduce the number of trees, they no longer extend to the end of the path. To fix this, you can adjust the spacing between the trees so that the trees extend to the end of the path. By default, each item in the array is rotated so that it aligns with the path. But if you click the Align Items button in the ribbon to toggle this off, now each tree has the exact same orientation. When you click this button again to toggle this back on, each tree is now once again rotated so that its alignment is based on the path. You can also control the orientation of the trees relative to the path. To do this, you can choose the Tangent Direction option, or simply click the Tangent Direction button in the ribbon. The program prompts you to specify the first point of the Tangent Direction vector. Click to select the end point of the spline. Then the program prompts you to specify the second point of the Tangent Direction vector. Move the cursor so that the imaginary line between the first and second point is aligned with the tree symbol at approximately a 50 degree angle, and then click. As soon as you do, the orientation of all of the trees immediately adjusts. Once you are satisfied with the array, you can press Enter to select the Exit option 
or click the Close Array button. Suppose that after looking at the results, you decide that there are too many trees. Move your cursor over any one of the trees and they all highlight. This indicates that this is a path array. When you click to select a tree, they are all selected and the ribbon changes to the array contextual ribbon. Now you can make changes to the array. With the items toggled off, you can click in the items field and change the number of items to 10. When you do, the trees no longer extend to the end of the path. That is because the distance between the trees has not changed. Look in the ribbon at the Properties panel and you can see that the Measure Method tool is currently selected. Expand this button and choose the Divide method. Now the 10 trees are distributed evenly along the length of the path. This is because the Divide method uses equal divisions so that there is only a single grip at the starting point of the path array. To check this, look in the Items panel. You can no longer control the distance between items or the total length of the path array. Change this back to the Measure method and now the items are placed based on a specific distance and you can once again adjust these values in the ribbon and you again see multiple grips. You can also use the tools in the Rows panel in the ribbon. Right now there is just one row. Change this value to 2 and a second row of trees is immediately added which follow the same path. You can now control the distance between those rows using either the triangular grip or by using the tools in the ribbon. For example, if you change the spacing to 72, the second row of trees moves closer. In addition, several of the grips are multifunctional grips. When you move the cursor over the triangular grip at the end of the path, you can change the item count or the total item spacing. If you hover the cursor over the square grip, you can move the array or change the level count. And if you hover the cursor over this triangular grip, you can change the row count or row spacing. If you choose row count, the program prompts you to specify the number of rows. Change the row count back to 1 and press Enter. When you are done editing the array, you can click the Close Array button or simply press the Escape key to deselect the array.